As there's a drive in a deep left field by Castellanos, it will be. Oh man, it's eight o'clock. And so that'll make it a. I don't need the spotlight. I shine just fine. Hi, I'm Karma, and yes, I am a bitch. Brav Bros. Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Brav Bros, your favorite podcast from the bros for everybody, for whoever wants to listen. I am your co-host, Steel Russell, joined, as always, by the one and only Boot Scoot McGee. What's up, dude? I like that one. <laughs> that was there was a lot of good ones. Yeah. yeah. I saw a lot of good ones. There were a couple on YouTube. Uh, we're on uh, day two of doing two shows a week. I feel like I haven't left your house. That's fine. Yeah. Well, I was also here to watch Vanderpump last night, but yeah. We're in this. We are We are in this. We got the first episode of the VPR reunion, which is obviously the main focus of this. We're going to do a quick little recap of Teresa's wedding, because I guess we kind of have to. And um, But I just got back from like a little family dinner. I had a little pizza, so I'm like mm. all swollen right now from sodium. Um, but, you know, it was a lovely Naturally, dinner. that's what everybody thinks about <laughs> after eating pizza. That's what I think about. You just enjoy it. No, because then I'm going to wake up tomorrow, my face is going to be all puffy and like... You know, it's just, I, I don't like that feeling. We're going to get you one of those, um, one of those things, you like a metal thing you put in the freezer and oh, then the you press it against your face. Yeah. Uh, who has the face roller when she gets anxious? Sutton. Sutton. Yeah. I need, oh, Sutton, if you're listening, I don't know if she listens. She's just a friend of the yeah, show. That's fine. That's, that's presumptuous. Well, of if she is think. listening. If you Send are. a couple face rollers. Yeah, we could use a face roller. I think yeah. it's good for stress as well and to get the sodium out of my face because I'm going to be all puffy tomorrow. Yep. Now, how does that work? Does it just squeeze right out of your pores or? No, I wake up and I'll do a couple of those guys. If you're not a YouTuber, you're not seeing, but, you know, you rub like under the eyes, try yep. to like flush it out of the system a little mm-hmm. bit. You know, it's it's self-care. It's self-care because Medical. I because I care. Wow. Let's get a t-shirt made. <laughs> self-care because I care. But... Let's start out with some plugs. Um, we have our live show coming up July 26th in New York City at the City Winery. So if you haven't gotten your tickets yet, we are outselling Philly already, and we've only been selling tickets for two weeks. So we are on pace to sell out rather quickly. So if you don't have a ticket, I urge you to get one now. I got three messages today when I posted the ticket link that multiple people bought tickets. They bought multiple tickets each. Fuck yeah. So yeah, it's amazing. Um, But if you don't have a ticket, please buy one. Get to the show. It's going to be a great time. Our guests are piling up. We've got some really, really good ones. We can't announce them. We're going to have to make some cuts, honestly. There's too many guests. We have too many guests that want to come out and hang out with us. And it is really funny to think that Steele and I are going to sit down in a room and cross off names from Bravo Liberty. Yeah, we're not. We we don't yeah, have we don't time need for, you. Yeah, yeah, we don't have time for this one. Maybe this. Nah, we don't have time for that one. I don't know why we're mobsters we're in, New in York. this scenario. Oh, yeah, that's why. Worked, okay, yeah. cool, cool, cool. But our other plug is if you are in the Philly area next Wednesday, we will be at Barstool Sansom for a little watch party. We're gonna be hanging out. All night watching the show with you guys. If you want to see me throw my notebook live, if you want to see me yell at Shooter, we will be there. I don't know why you're going to yell at me. Probably because you're going to tell me to calm down. I'm going to tell you to shut the fuck up or something. Yeah, probably. Like, yeah. <laughs> this is the huge. Yeah. And if everybody who is going, just keep it down. Let's watch the show. <laughs> yeah. Try to, you know, let's watch the show. I don't think that's going to. I saw a, a. You could talk during commercials. How about that? Same law. Yeah, I like that. But I did see a reel of last week's, or I guess last night's reunion. Oh, um, last night's. At yeah. the watch party at Sansom. George Niang there? I didn't see uh, the minivan, but I did see somebody show their Apple Watch, and it had the decibel warning because it got too high, it got too loud in there. Like, have you ever seen that? If yeah. you're in a place like at the- I get it, like football stadiums. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that happened at the bar. So I don't know if it's going to be quiet, but I'm excited. I think it's going to be a really fun environment to watch the show. So Just put the subtitles on. Yeah, you need to reserve a seat, so make sure you do that. And um, come and hang out with the bros. Hell yeah. But let's move on to our Rose and Thorn. We skipped that for our first episode this week. We saved them for now. So I'm going to let you go first. You kick us off here, pal. Well, my Rose, we already touched on it. Uh, all of you who listened last week and reached out with your name considerations for me, they were all really good. Boot I, Scoot McGee is one of my favorite. I did amend that. It was Boot Scoot. They didn't add a Magoot at the end, which was a no, missed opportunity. That's fine. I mean, you had a good platform to work with, and you just expanded on it. You know, all creative minds work, right? But yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Anyway, uh, no, I saw Boot Scoot, Scoot Boot Boogie Machine, 
Oh, I like that. Yeah. I right. saw what oh fuck, what was the one? It was really good. It was um it was Italian. It was like a oh man. Oh wow, that sounds awesome. It was so good and now I can't remember it. I have to look at my phone, I'll find it. But it was a really, really, really good one. Keep those coming every week. I need more and more scooter names, shooter names, because I run out. I've been doing this for over fifteen years. I've been making up names yep. for him. So as you notice, I start to repeat. I don't want to repeat. So give me a new one every week. So far, it's going to be tough to beat Boot Scoot Magoot, but I think you guys can do it. You guys are a Judy smart bunch. M- Bucatini. You don't get to do it. I don't know. I'm just trying you to get the Italian play, one. You don't get to play the game. No, I it was some uh, variation of pasta. No, dude, I can fuck. I can find you it. You find it. I'll get into my, uh, yeah, yeah, my yeah. thorn over here. Uh, thorn comes from this was on our actually i guess it was on the full episode it wasn't the just the clip but you guys are naive fully believing joe gorga the angel of god in quotations who never uses hyperbole right that gia called and said to leave melissa or that louis melissa cheated with multiple men that that last part's wrong unless louis cheated with some men who knows uh come on i don't i i don't get it i don't know who this person is a fan of, I guess, Teresa? I don't know. It's it's hard to say. I had some people comment certain things about being pro-Teresa, but then they shit on Teresa and shit on us. Also, when sentence. did Louis say that Melissa cheated on Joe with a couple of men? I don't, I, like, he was the one who, so, quote-unquote, broke the news and had Joe come over. He but. broke that news. I think they're referring to, there's been a multiple Melissa Gorga cheating rumors over the past few years. Yeah, I mean, which housewife doesn't have that? That's what I'm saying. If you dig far enough, every single housewife on TV has allegedly cheated in some way, shape, or form over the past five years. So all of those rumors should be taken with a grain of salt. If there's not evidence, we need evidentiary support. Yeah, where are the paparazzi? That's what I'm saying. If there is evidence of this, bring it forward. We will rescind any statement made if there's evidence to the contrary. That's actually a fact. Yes. Yeah, we stand by that always. Promise. That's the Brav Bros promise. That's the Brav Bro salute, yep. baby. But your rose. I already did my rose. It was all the bro? people that reached out with my nickname. Oh, right, right, right. I did find it. Okay, I found what was it? it. Scoogazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, too. Oh, Fuck, what did I do? That makes sound fake. No, man, I should have saved that. Yeah, you probably should have saved that for next Damn. week. Damn. You wouldn't That's a rookie. Remember. I got excited because people actually like understood the assignment and sent them in. We're now talking about it again, so you don't think that more are going to roll in? That's the goal, is that every week I have a slew, yeah. if you will, of Magoot's names. Sloots Magoot's. Ooh, that's a dirty one. I saved that one for the weekend, buddy. <laughs> Save that one for Fire Island. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're going on a on a friend trip this weekend so me and magoots maybe we'll do a live from fire island a little memorial day check-in with you idiots yeah, after we play some spike ball whoop, whoop, my turn all right so my thorn you know i like to start out with a thorn and then bring it up with a little rosy action my thorn is two different reviews said wow these guys are boring and then one of them somebody actually came to our defense and was like well here's a novel idea don't listen to them and move on which i really appreciate the support but i do think it's a really funny prospect that like if i don't enjoy a video i simply move on from it yeah, to take I mean, the time to comment like you're boring it's like well you're yeah, I have, like i have a short attention span so even things that i really enjoy if i watch too many videos of that i tend to move on pretty quickly unless there's something like right there yeah like a little snap but I never really feel compelled to just tell them that they're boring. You guys are boring. <laughs> they're taking time out of their hard-earned day to give you some content. Yeah. Well, you know what? I just thought it was funny. But um, my rose... I'm hurt. Are you... It's going to be okay. Yeah. It's going to be okay. My rose is a really funny one because it's a four-star review. And I appreciate the four-star review because they were honest... I listen to podcasts all the time, and this is from Wiggy Baby. I listen to the podcast all the time, and my biggest pet peeve is sound issues. I love this podcast because I love Bravo, but the sound on this podcast is low. Well, at least lower than other shows I listen to. I have to turn this literally all the way up when I listen, fix that, and the show is perfection. Look, this is a constructive review. We have been working on sound since we started this whole thing a year ago, we are not sound technicians. We are not computer guys. We are not any of the technological side of things. We're not technologically stupid, but we're by no means like geniuses here. So we're learning as we go. I think tonight, because of this review, we did crank the volume on this yep. bad boy. So if it's a little too loud, 
turn it down a little turn bit. Turn it down a little bit. <laughs> but also some feedback would be nice. Like, hey, you guys finally got it. It only took a year for you dumbasses to figure out that like volume works. That would be very welcome. You can call us dumbasses. Please too. do. Please, please do. If I see a DA in the comments, I know what you're referring to and I appreciate you. But that's my rose. Love it. Yeah. So let's move on to the news um, so we can get to what all you came here for. We know why you're here. And it rhymes with Shmi Shmi Mar. Uh, wasn't Teresa's wedding? No. <laughs> Teresa's wedding did almost a million views. I saw that. I, uh, Whatever. We'll get into it. We'll talk about it. But let's start with the first one. We have a new show coming from some OGs of Roni. Sonia and Luann go to Crappy Lake or some shit. It's a Sonia and Luann standalone in which... Which we knew about and we talked about and we were wondering how it was going to be able to hold its own when it's just two people. Right. But, but I didn't know the premise until yeah. this week. The premise is pretty much simple life. Like Nicole Richie and Paris Hilton where they go to like podunk towns and do quote unquote like American shit. Yeah, like milking cows and stuff. Yeah. Like that's what they're doing in this place. I think it's in Illinois, and it's like in the middle of nowhere. It's a town of like 6,500 people, and they're going around doing like country shit. I always feel so bad for the people that actually live there Me because too. it turns their little area into a circus. Now, we're going to watch this, and I hope it's really funny because if I remember correctly, the clips from Simple Life were hilarious. They were good. But I always feel really bad for the people that live there. And they're like, well, who the fuck are these people? Why are they here? Yeah. What's up with these cameras? And they're scaring the fish away. And why are you making a mockery of my profession? Because yeah. you are like grossed out by milking a cow or something of that nature. You're making a mockery of what I do for a living and feed the United States with my dairy, with my cows. But it's yucky. Yeah. That's a whole different thing. We'll get into well, I don't that. I think they're going to go to a show. slaughterhouse. No. <laughs> <laughs> that meant, would be interesting. I meant dairy cows. I wasn't going to drop that on here, but... We will watch it. I hope it's good. We go into every show hoping for the best because we want these shows to do well because we want the podcast to do well, and yeah. it's synonymous. And we also enjoy Bravo TV. That's why we started this shit to begin with. So we want good shows. Hopefully it catches. Hopefully it's captivating. I'll be honest, I'm not super hopeful, but I will, no. give, it, I will give it an honest, honest take. I think that... The summer is going to be interesting because we're going to have the new Roni popping off. I assume Ultimate Girl Strip 4 is going to come up at some point. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, we're still waiting on that one. They're probably still figuring out the whole Caroline Manzo thing. But, um, yeah, I mean, it, the summer is going to be pretty interesting. We're going to watch it all because there's not going to be a lot of things to keep our attention. So no, Phillies, Eagles preseason. And I was Bravo. talking about like Bravo aspects, but yeah. Oh, I was just talking about what we have to do oh, overall. Yeah. It's still not a big list of to dos. That's my point. No, we, be... we might have to dig up an old relic. We may have to dive back into the vault and start rewatching something yep. to kind of make up for some lost airtime. So if you guys have suggestions, Below Deck was always presented to us, but Below Deck is it's so all over the place. It's really hard to dive back into that one. So maybe Top Chef. I would love to do Top Chef. I don't know if there's enough Top Chef listeners. We've had a couple of comments. We've had a couple of comments, but look, if you have like a favorite, maybe we'll put a poll up, like which show we should go back to season one on. I'll do it like multiple times. We'll take the average and then we'll watch that one. Works. That's a good plan. Yep. Um, moving on. We got a cryptic tweet from Jax saying, big news coming. Like with the timing of it, he's clearly alluding to a return to the show. Or he's doing a podcast. Or uh, any any out wow any other outcome. But I will say I heard from two extraordinarily reputable sources in our DMs, and I mean very reputable when it comes to this, that he is not coming back to the show. Jax is lying again. It is potentially something in the capacity of Vanderpump. Yeah, maybe it's an OnlyFans. Oh my God, that would be fucking hysterical. Jax Taylor only fans? I don't so the problem is and I could see Bravo doing this because I feel like they're a lot of times they're a little behind the eight ball on this. Only fans? No. <laughs> I think that they realize how much people were watching the Jackson Britney VPR stuff. Yeah. That maybe they're gonna announce that Jackson Britney will do VPR again. A but little rewatch, but people aren't going to watch boat. it next year. Yeah, they missed the boat of They're it. They're watching it now because they want to hear their take on Scandal. Just on Scandal, that's I, it. I didn't look at the ratings, but I imagine that the ratings were pretty high to start off with and then kind of fell apart. That's what so I would So I 
again, I can see Bravo just throwing it back out there, especially with Peacock, but that's got to be something like that. There's no way he's coming back to the show. I don't think you can bring him back. I don't know. I mean, as Dodie said in our interview with her, she has no intention of coming back mm-hmm. ever. I think if Jax is smart, he'll stay off the show. I think for the sake of his marriage and relationship and life overall, he probably does much better not on this what show. If they brought him in for the second part of the reunion and that was going to be the big surprise? I actually wouldn't mind that. That would be fun. I take that back because then we'll get to what my the, issues were yeah, with the reunion. Yeah, exactly. And the last thing, we got a Jersey trailer for the reunion. It looks explosive. Oh, yeah. More so than in the past, only because we do know that after this reunion, we have not had a reconnection in any way, shape, or form of Teresa and Melissa. They are actually on the outs to the point that the show is put on pause until they can figure out what to do next with the two of them. So this genuinely might be a reunion for the ages. And I will say, bravo, They've got to be thrilled with their ratings of their shows over the past two months. And I wonder if it's Scandaval centric, if that's just like trickle down from that, or it if this be. show is just maybe the Melissa Teresa thing is like finally, finally come coming to a, to a head. head. Yeah, that could definitely be it too. I, I think the Scandaval thing is a lot of it because I'm sure some people kind of stopped watching or were like watching haphazardly and then the Scandaval thing dropped and they started watching again and that brought them into other shows. But yeah, the one line that, Teresa gives Melissa while she's walking off and saying that I can't wait to not see your fucking face ever again. And then she goes, where are you going somewhere? Where are you going? And Teresa says, I'm not leaving the show. You are. Yeah. So we'll see. Potentially damning. Potentially. We've talked about it in the past. Like, does Teresa have the power to do that? I would have said, I would have argued like two years ago. Absolutely. Two years ago. Yes. Now, probably not. I don't think so. But here's the thing. And this was wild to me. And we're going to talk about the wedding real quick for a little bit. The wedding almost pulled a million viewers. Mm -hmm. It did better than every other episode in Jersey except for the finale and maybe one other episode. Probably one of them in Ireland. That's nuts because I thought it was awful. I I didn't enjoy that episode. I thought... We didn't need it. We really didn't need it because... Like, they they didn't... I don't know. They they made it a special. So it's like, uh, okay, like, watch it if you want to, essentially, is how I read specials. But... I mean, it's in the same time slot. It's the week after the finale. In between that and the reunion, you're going to tease little things. And when they did the trailer last week, they teased Marge talking about, like, why is Melissa not here? And they teased Teresa crying and all this shit. And it's like, it ends up just being a fucking wedding. And the only real thing that happened the entire time was Louie wanted to have sex with Teresa during the cocktail hour. And I'm like, oh, my God. (laughs) But that it was one of those things that like I could not stay keeping attention to it. Like I was that was I was on my phone a lot on and off and like all right whatever like nothing's happening. We're just gearing up for the wedding, gearing up for the wedding. The wedding happened. Cool. Oh wow, familiar faces from Bravo shows. Cool. Done. Yeah, and I think that they did themselves a disservice. We talked about it last week by over promoting it when it actually well, happened. Not because there's a million viewers. That's true. That is a very good point. And like, here's the thing: when the other women of Jersey get there and like. Jen brings up Joe when she's getting ready and there's other moments where people bring up uncomfortable situations. It's like, look, regardless of how anybody feels about Teresa or Louie on this day of all days, leave them the fuck alone. Let them get married. Don't bring drama. This is the the day of my daughter's wedding. This is the day of my daughter's (laughs) wedding. Don't bring your drama. (laughs) No, but seriously, like I don't care what your feelings are towards them. It's not the time or place. Let her have the day. She's been looking for this a long time so just like let her have it keep the drama out of it let it be a nice night joe and melissa they had no reason to post shit that night i thought that was a catty move but they're not like they've had every opportunity to be the bigger person both sides have really yeah and this past season they could have we talked about it before they could have easily come out of this season looking great if they just didn't do things and they shoot themselves in the foot all the time. But the problem is they never realize that they're shooting themselves in the foot because no one around them is telling them. Oh, that's a good point. It's like everybody's afraid to bring it up. And the other women in the group, like don't talk about it specifically, except for the newbies, the newbies show up and they're like, Oh yeah, I want to ask some questions. And then they kind of fall in line. So like nobody ever talks to either of them about what their actions are and how they're doing it and how potentially they could make it all go away or come up as the winner of this whole thing. Yeah. No one's giving them any guidance, and they just continuously disappoint us and disappoint each other, and it's just stupid at this point. So hopefully the reunion is what it's billed to be, which is, I mean, again, three parts. Everything's three parts now. 
but three parts of a reunion. Hopefully we can get over it and they'll get it figured the fuck out because otherwise I don't know what they're going to do. I agree. My one question to you is with the success of the wedding show special, whatever you want to call it, does that springboard a potential spinoff for Louie and Teresa? You've been pining for the love bubble. You think that they've been dropping that name because you think that that might be the name of the show. Yeah, and don't get me wrong. I probably won't enjoy the show, but I think it's going to happen. Yeah, and I I think that this is confirmation that something's going to happen. Now, she could do both where they do the love bubble type of thing, and it's like a six-episode like winter house type of bullshit. Oh, God. Yeah, I know. I thought about that the other day. I I was afraid to bring it up, but I know, and I think they might do it. No, no, no. If you're going to do it, go all in. It's a Peacock special. Just throw it out for six episodes. Oh, you know what? I think they'll do that. I think it'll be a Peacock run, a short run. If it does well, it might springboard into a... They're moving Miami from Peacock to to Bravo. Bravo. So maybe and they put I don't bubble. know what they're gonna do with Luann and that's Sonya. Bravo. That's straight that's Bravo. Bravo. Yeah, I went so straight. Peacock's to... not getting a lot thrown to them these days. So maybe they're gearing up for because that would help their ratings. That would help Peacock in general, yep. or I guess downloads. Um, all right. All right so let's make here's here some yeah. advice though for pre, for Peacock. Just set it up so that it's like Netflix. Drop them all at one time. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, just absolutely. drop every episode right then and there. Do not make us wait week to week because we will go crazy. Because we have to wait another week to talk about it. I'm talking about Steel and I at this point. Yes. It's so dumb. Just let us watch it all in one fell swoop. We'll decide how we want to talk about it, how we want to watch it, whatever. Same thing with reunions in the future. If you have a Peacock exclusive, like say Miami stayed on Peacock, yeah. drop every episode of the reunion least, that day. At least the reunions, because yes. you can just watch, or just drop the reunion episode and make it two and a half hours long. We'll watch the whole thing in yeah. one sitting. It's and a movie. Just, exactly. So I think, you know. Obviously, they should bring us in to these conversations. You know, yeah. we've been talking about it for... Send us to cities to scout it out. I still want to be the, the housewife scout. So do I. I think we'd it's be great. We'd be great. We'll start out in Delco. We'll move up to the... Where are we going? Cleveland. Cleveland. Yeah, and we're going to Cleveland. And, and then, then Scottsdale. Then Scottsdale. So that we've got. I can't cities. believe that that was an actual rumor last year. Remember that? Everybody was talking I about it. I like, about that. And they haven't announced shit. They, well, I guess they did announce... New Orleans? Oh, yeah, that's right. That was a while ago. but That was a while back. They talked about New Orleans. I haven't heard anything since. Rono. Rono. <laughs> oh, Rono. Um, when the ratings plummet. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't know. I, we, they need to bring us in. Consultants. Yeah, but that's all we're going to talk about for the wedding. I, I will say credit to them. It looked like a beautiful wedding. I love when... People lean into the extravagant, actually. I, I actually I like into that too, it. Yeah. I liked all the crazy fire dancers and that sword guy. And it's fun. If you're gonna nobody be... caught in a bubble this time, though. Nobody caught in a bubble. We good. were happy that there was no people stuck in a bubble. We are still concerned about the woman that was in the bubble in her love bubble party. We have not yet gotten confirmation that she has been released from said bubble. She could still be floating there. Yeah, I didn't see a skeleton on the uh, pool or anything. <laughs> Just a skeleton floating in a ball. In a bubble. Yeah. Oh, no, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> but that takes us to the main event. That's why we're all here. That's why you're all listening. It is the Vanderpump reunion. Finally, we had ourselves a watch party last night. Once again, me, Dev, Shoots, and Louie. Yep. Um, the only people you need for a party, but... Overall, before we get into it, rate it. One out of ten, how did this episode do in your eyes? Solid 7.1. I, I think I'm probably a 6.9. Not yeah. that funny, but... I, I, I do hope that they use more of the one-on-one interviews. I think I even said to you last night, it would we would get more done That's yeah. if Andy sat down with just Ariana and Tom and then threw Raquel in for half of it. Yeah, I would really like that. Maybe just leave LVP out there too. Maybe she can mediate. I don't care. But the rest of them, it's just too much. And I'm hoping, and and I think this is what's going to happen, that they calm down a little bit. Obviously, we knew tensions were going to be high. Absolutely. We knew people were going to be shouting and screaming every time that Sandoval even spoke or looked in a certain direction. We expected that. I'm just afraid that it's going to last all three episodes and we're not going to get enough out of it. And we did get a lot out of the one-on-ones. 
I was expecting them to come out of the gate like that. I didn't think it was going to be a calm affair. I thought everybody was going to be yelling, screaming, trying to get their licks in on on Sandoval, trying to talk that shit, which I appreciate. Like, yeah, of course, it's the first time you're really seeing them. It's a reunion episode, so you know you want to bring the heat. So I knew the first five to ten minutes were going to be just hollering and screaming and yelling and insults. My issue was that it carried on for the entirety of it, and nothing really got accomplished. Like, I mean, there was things that were said, and I'm glad I wrote stuff down because honestly, looking through my notes, I was like, all right, like more came out than I thought. Mm -hmm. Because watching it, I'm like, Jesus, like, I can't understand what anybody's saying. Like, I don't know what point we're talking about now. Every time someone starts to talk, somebody else starts to yell. I don't think that's the way to go about it. And we're going to get into it much more. um, So let's just start. We do get out of the gate the one-on-ones and it starts out with Sandoval and Andy and kind of juxtaposed to Ariana and Andy. And he's like, when did you catch the feelings? Like, when did it start? And he says he had inklings, I guess, or at least started to be attracted to her in some way the year prior. Yeah. He's like, I really started to get close to her then. Like I started to feel some things, but it all kind of took shape after see you next Tuesday and the Mondrian. So they went to the Mondrian the following night was see you next Tuesday. That's when they went to the Abbey that's when they blinked. I thought it was really, really interesting that the one time that Allie caught them, the only time they were seen together away mm-hmm. from the main group was also the same night they fucked. Like, that was surprising to me. You would think... Too good to be true. Right? Yeah. That lines up too well for me. I think that we know that Sandoval, for everything that he is, and obviously he's been caught into a huge lie right now, but overall... He's probably a really good liar. And this indicates to me, okay, let's lay out all of the hard evidence that everybody has. Right. The only real hard evidence that they can put the two of us together is that night in August or early September, whenever it was. Let's just lean into that. That's that just, was our first night. Mm-hmm. Even if their first night happened a week before, six months before, a year before, who the fuck knows, you can kind of let your imagination run wild with that. I thought that that was interesting, too, and I I do kind of looking at Sandoval as being like a manipulator and obviously trying to control every narrative as possible. There are certain things that he can kind of lean into to try to soften the blow, if you will. Well, I think that you're completely right because we get him caught in a lie mid-episode. Yeah. Schwartz, Schwartz spilled the beans. Like, he actually didn't hold back finally. And he's like, I found out, what did he say, August? And He said August, which is weird because when he was on Watch What Happens Live, he said January. Yeah, so but he went back on it, which I'm glad. And maybe, oh, wait, Watch What Happens Live was post-reunion? No, yeah. no, no, it wasn't. I think no, it wasn't. Was. I don't Are think it was. Sure? I don't think it was. I think it was close to reunion, but I don't think it was post-reunion. Okay. We needed to check our flow charts, but I don't think so. But I will say, he caught him in a lie. And Sandoval was like, what? I didn't say it. Did I say that? I didn't tell you that. Like, you can see him just trying to backpedal. And it's like, okay, that gives much more evidence to the fact that like you just said he's gonna lean into the hard evidence because it's gonna give him some kind of passageway through this Mm -hmm. you know what i mean it's something that he can at least lean on to say this was the starting point you know it was because you saw us right but i think that this goes way way like this is a long thing well we know that and if you kind of juxtapose that to the quick little conversation that andy and schwartz had because schwartz is the first one out there Mm -hmm. First thing that Andy said to Schwartz was, were you silent or were you silenced? Both. And Schwartz said both. Both. So that means that he was silent for a while and silenced potentially for longer than that. That's how I read into it. So I'm thinking, okay, yeah, you were silent until just recently and you're willing to go back as far as August. Mm -hmm. Schwartz being Sandoval's best friend, there have to have been different overlaps where Sandoval said, oh, I'm just hanging out with Schwartz or I'm going to Schwartz's house or whatever. And then the next day or two days later, Ariana probably mentioned something like, oh, yeah, he was just over at your house the other night. Schwartz must have known. He must have been like, oh, yeah, yeah. A month before that, two months, however long. Yeah. He must, if anybody's going to be on the trail early, it's going to be Sandoval, if not Ariana. And we'll get into the whole, did Ariana know and kind of like turn a blind eye because she didn't want to know type of thing a little bit later. But Schwartz definitely is the person that would have known the longest. Yeah. I don't know. I, the whole thing just reeks to me like it's been way longer than what they're letting on. And I think that people realize that, too. I think that they're not digging into it. I'm surprised that somebody like Lala and James aren't suggesting that it's been going on well, for longer yet. I don't yet. think that they can because they can't get out of their own way. We're, yeah. we're going to get to them. I want to finish up with the pre-interviews because 
It goes to Raquel, and she says, I'm prepping for the worst, but hoping for the best. What's the best? What's the best possible outcome here? What could possibly happen in your eye, like in your mind? Probably that somebody like actually assault her and she can is that that would assist. honestly probably be the best case scenario somebody tries to like attack her so she can like file a suit against them. yeah other than that what do you mean the best do you think they're gonna go out there and be like look we know you messed up but hey forgive and forget like what the fuck i have no idea dude. but whatever the one interesting thing is andy's talking to ariana and he's like did you have any suspicions and she says no Flat out, no, I didn't. I really didn't have any suspicions, especially about Raquel. He said, looking back, can you see moments that you... And she's like, absolutely. I think that you just go back to what she said herself. It's like, regardless of the intimacy, regardless of anything, any issues we were having behind closed doors, that doesn't justify any of the behavior. So I don't think even, he tried to break up with her at all. No, I don't Not either. I think once. that he had some... She did say there were some conversations about him and her and their relationship issues, but I do not think that he ever broached the topic. I think he might have said something like off color and passing, and that's what he's using as like, yeah, I said I wanted to break up. And it was probably like, you know what? You don't even like me. You always make me feel stupid. And like, this isn't working. And that's. You never his. use any of the pens yeah. that I buy. I haven't seen you use one battery, and I stocked that bitch for six months. We're ready for an apocalypse, and yet you haven't thanked me for the double A's I put in your bedside. Like, I don't think that there was ever a conversation of, look, I think this needs to end. This needs to be over. And that's purely judging off of his reactions to things, how he's discussing things, how he's lying about things, and getting caught in these lies. So, of course, I'm going to lean into. Ariana has evidence. Ariana has proof. Ariana has friends that have seen the same shit. So yeah, we go where the evidence is. We finally get to the actual reunion. I thought that Tom was going to come in first. And I thought that Ariana was going to walk in last for like a little revenge walk because she looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that they were going to give her the moment of like walking out there and Sandoval being like, fuck. Like I wish that had happened, but I also did enjoy <laughs> in like a the walk of shame. Yeah, and like that's the thing. I kind of feel gross watching this, and I've told you that before because you're just like, you got to just buy into the depravity of it, really. Like, okay, like we're all kind of a, the whole entire U.S. right now is just in this gross affair, and you just got to accept it and like play in the dirt for a while. But yeah, you, I, there was really no other way. Like you said, like you could have had Ariana come in and last in her red dress, revenge dress. Would have been great. Sandoval coming in last, also great. Really, you can't go wrong with it. Can't go honestly. wrong. Well, you can't do anything wrong here, really, other than like give Sandoval a platform to like speak on oh. his own behalf, Howie Mandel. But I did. Why does why does poor Sheena get stuck on the side of the Toms? Balance. I I the know. Only thing but, I can think of. And maybe she just bit the bullet. Was like, yeah, I'll sit there. I don't care. But like that sucks. And maybe she's cooler with Schwartz. I guess might be the thing. Maybe she's not holding things over his head, but. I don't think she's cool with them. So she, you know, sometimes you got to tip your cap. Sheena, tip your cap for stepping on that landmine and taking one for the team. Yeah, for sure. We find out that <laughs> Raquel can't be in the room because of the restraining order. So she's 100 yards away in a trailer watching this thing. And we'll talk about her reactions. Literal well. trailer trash. Little, wow. Yeah. Spirit. I wish I had a burn. That'd thing. be cool. Let's add I that to the soundboard. I don't. I haven't added anything to the soundboard. Sizzle. I missed the uh, the air horn though. Yeah, Miami. Can't wait for Miami to come back. But before we dive into the actual affair of it all, I thought this moment was actually pretty funny because Sheena's talking about Brock and Andy asked about Brock and Lala and their relationship and everything and how they've gotten closer because of the children and it's all really beautiful. It's all nice. Like we're glad to see people come together. But she's like, yeah, and Brock chopped off all his hair. And Sandoval, like, smiles. He goes, what? And I'm oh like, Sandoval, God. stay the fuck out of it, dude. <laughs> you don't get to react like your buddy buddy with Sheena, okay? Brock chopped his hair off. You still stare at the floor. You don't look up. I don't know what he's trying to do, honestly. I he's mean, the rest of the time, he was staring at the floor. That's all he should do. That's yeah. all you should do. You shouldn't react. You're not. This is not a reunion. This is the well, burning that's, that's the of problem. Tom Sandoval. Is it, it is really funny because there are... A couple other things that you need to talk about. No, like, there's not. Hey, Sheena, congratulations on your wedding. How's everything going? Okay, cool. Tom and Katie, you guys broke up. What's that like? like, <laughs> like and they just, things. But then they just pepper in the Sandoval shit in between, and then everybody just pops off and starts screaming at each other. So it was actually a really funny reunion because you do get that. And then someone, 
Sandoval has any reaction and somebody just tells him to shut the fuck up. It's well, great. That's when, so Andy says to Sandoval, he's like, you got anything to say, whatever. And Tom immediately starts crying. And James instantly, like, first of all, everyone starts yelling at him. But James is the loudest. He's like, pull yourself together, man. Oh, crocodile tears. Like, you fucking pussy. Like, it just goes in. And that's honestly, between him and Lala in that moment, I was like, hey, this is what this episode's going to be. I was okay with it to start off. No, no, totally cat. fine with it. Yeah. But I got nervous that that was going to be the tone for the entirety of it. And we'll, we'll talk about it. I know I need to keep waiting. I, I want to talk about it now, but let's get back to this. And he just says, you know, nobody should have to go through that to Ariana. And if I'm Sandoval, I am choosing my words so carefully. I'm being so pointed. And no, she didn't go through it, Tom. You put her through it, Tom. You did this shit to her. You don't get to now play this card. And I agree. Wipe the crocodile tears. You can't be a bitch in this situation because you're the one that caused the situation. You sit there and take your beating like a man because you fucking deserve every punch you're about to get. You need to sit there, shut the hell up, and stare at the floor. The, the big tears, the, like the welling up, all of that, if that's what you're going to do, then don't talk. Don't yeah, talk. Yeah, I think his, I mean, obviously his pride's going to get in the way. He's going to defend himself and he's always going to think that what he's doing is the correct way to approach it. And it's obviously not there. I mean, there is no correct way to approach this except for keep your eyes down, stare at the floor the entire time, answer when spoken to, and don't interject ever. No, that's don't. really it. That, I mean, that's, I guess Chat GPT let him down. Chat but that's GPT okay. definitely let him down, his publicist. Um, yeah, you're right. I mean, am I surprised that his apology? on air during the reunion was fucking terrible no 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 he, standard he, his apologies when he had hours and hours to write them online were terrible well no jet jet gpt was what i was gonna Jat say gpt jet gpt yeah. chat gpt did it for me that would actually make seconds. more sense because it's probably a knockoff chat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he found it on on ask jeeves jet <laughs> gpt um but no, I mean, Ariana proves her point immediately because as soon as he's crying, welling up, acting like a bitch, she immediately says, all he did the whole time was victim blame me, put it on me. He made me feel like I was the problem with the intimacy thing, with all of the reasons that they were having problems at home. And I can't stress this enough. Problems at home don't mean you get to go lay with somebody else in bed. Yeah. Problems at home don't mean you go fuck your girl's best friend. Like that is just disgusting behavior but he but that's what i'm talking about the pride thing like he will that prideful though he like, is he is prideful so I know. he won't take any blame but he needs to just uh, i know but that's part of it like if he was actually willing to take the blame if he actually felt like the reason for all of this happening was purely on his shoulders as he should then he wouldn't be doing all of this he would have apologized directly to her took yeah. full blame and apologized to everybody else, took full blame again. And then sat and then, in the corner. Look, maybe then because Sheena said something during the finale about, you know, let us go pick up the pieces. Then if you want to try to test the waters and thank them for being there for her, which you don't really have deserve to do. You don't have any standing to do so. But if you want to try that out, then you can do that. But you can't try to deflect blame at all and explain your side of the story. One, because everybody's just going to jump down your throat. It's a dumb fucking move. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to look at it like this is the right thing to do. It's just not the smart thing to do. Nope. So do one or two, but don't do whatever the fuck you were doing. Then we get calls to other cheating rumors. And we get the clip of Tom saying to Sheena, like there was one other time. Now, I'm under the impression there was at least five. I'm going to say there was five other five? times. Yeah. I think five is a good number. It was five years that he's been unhappy. So one new chick each year. So oh, five. it's not like Oliver and Maya where it was 11. 11. Oh God. Like yeah. I know. 11. <laughs> I couldn't believe when she said that at the reunion, it was 11. I was like, Whoa, Ollie's out there doing work. But the other cheating rumors come up and this is when Lala gets amped up and starts going in. And here's my issue. And this has been my issue for the entire season. It doesn't just have to do with her. It's with James as well. Let me preface this. I think that Tom deserves the smoke. I think that Lala deserves the chance to say it. I think it's interesting that in the one-on-one -on -one interview with Andy, Ariana does allude to the fact that, you know, her and Sheena are really tight. Her, Lala, and Katie aren't like besties. They're close. Yeah. This has definitely brought them closer. But Lala's been arguably the most outspoken on the matter. Here's my thing, and this is important because 
I think this adds to the argument as a whole overall as a group going against Sandoval. Because you do, in fact, have a past, okay? And I know everyone in the group has a past, but because you do have a past, you should be really careful with how you're presenting your argument because she throws a lot of insults out there that could easily be turned around on her. It's the same situation. It's the same kind of setup. Is it, same, like, is it the same exact? No. But could you spin it? Yes, absolutely. And when you do that, it somewhat invalidates the argument that you're presenting, especially when it's being presented and just screaming at him. I don't think that ever lands the point. I think that if she's able to calmly say, I know I was in this position before, this is a different situation because of these reasons. This is why you're disgusting. This is why you're like Randall and you disgust me, get out of my fucking face. That's much more productive and will do much more uh, damage, I guess, if you will. Yeah. And just screaming and cussing and yelling at him. Because if to me, that just, it it belittles the argument a little bit. I, I, yeah, I fully understand that. And you're totally right. I will say I give both her and Tom or both her and James a little bit of a pass because again we expected I do. emotions yeah. to be running no, no, high. No. So I'm going to say I'm not going to make that projection right now. We'll see how the second and third part go when things start to die down a little bit. I personally think that things will die down a little bit and then Raquel will come out and they'll get they'll jacked ramp way up, up again. and we won't come back down. So I'm looking forward to that lull in between when everybody gets a little tired. Because it is a long fucking day. And then they kind of like settle they in. They settle yeah. in and we actually get some information. Now, my real sticking point with Lala specifically, and again, it kind of goes into the same boat of, of what I said about Ariana. Tom is the only one who's wrong in this entire situation. Yes, so, yeah, yeah. yes, we can nitpick and say you're doing it the wrong way because you're not getting the most out of the insults that you could do. I'm going to keep That's my biggest though. thing. Of course, we're going to nitpick. But my thing with Lala specifically is. You alluded to it. She's not as close to Ariana. And during that whole, really just the chastising of Tom from Lala, I didn't get the vibe that she was defending her friend, standing up for Ariana at all. I got the vibe that she was so fucking excited that yeah. she was so right. And she knows there's no repercussions for anything that she's going to say. That's a good and point. She was chomping at the bit to get after it because she could finally let loose and not have to worry about a thing. I think that's a good Except point. Except for us making fun of that yeah no but which we will that's kind of the vibe that i got now james on the other hand and, and this is sort of what happens next anyway why did you just read my notes no i can't read your fucking chicken scratch <laughs> um <laughs> james on the other hand i felt so bad for james him. hits harder yeah definitely because james was scorned in this as well and i think somebody says to him while he starts to get a little emotional like, this isn't about you right now. And it's like, no, 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 time out. And I think Lisa steps in. And and to all those people that were to address the Lisa part of it right now, I understand why she chimed in once. She should have taken a step back, I think, after first saying, like, this is why I'm going to stick by him. He is my partner. Does that make us cool, Ariana? Like, address that part of it. Sure. That is an important sure. part. After that, dude, settle back into the background. Well, do you think that she was def not necessarily defending Tom, but... Do you think that she was trying to mitigate a little bit because she's like this motherly figure to That's all exactly of them? That's exactly what I think it is, yes. Or I thought it was purely business, honestly. I thought it was, oh. I am actually financially invested with this person over well, here. Well, see, that's interesting because I've, it's different stances because yeah. you are newer to the show. You've been mm -hmm. in it for, what, two or three years now? Yeah. I'm an, I've always watched Vanderpump. Yeah. I've seen season one. So to me, she is always the motherly figure. But to you, someone that came in later, that's interesting because the mm -hmm. dynamic, I think you see it, it in this episode. I think you see in this episode the dynamic has shifted. Yeah. Lala would never say that shit to LVP in no the past. Way. Not the, I reject your opinion. And like telling LVP pretty much to shut up, sit down, and like, you're not in this one. I did see kind of a shift in dynamic there. Well, maybe she's kind of lost control of the kids. Maybe the kids are growing up a little bit, or maybe the kids think they've grown up. I don't know. But it was definitely a dynamic shift. But to your point, yeah, James broke my heart because the good thing about a guy like him, he can't fake his emotions. So what you're seeing is real. It's raw. It's true. This is why he's upset. We were brothers. And fuck you, Sandoval, by the way for negating that immediately. Brothers, I talked to you once a month. Fuck you. Yeah. Because I know your relationship was deeper than that. You meant something to this man. And that is such an important bond for a guy that doesn't have family in LA. He's kind of, he's been there since he was 21. He kind of found his roots in this bar and he kind of leaned on Sandoval for the entire time. We see that during the season because James says to Allie, defends Tom about the Abby situation. 
He's like, no, no, no. Like it, nothing's going on. Like there's no way. He cares about his relationship so much that means a lot to James. He le- like imagine somebody you look up to as a big brother fucking your life up like that, fucking your ex fiance and burning down everything you know, and then saying that you weren't that close when you're confronted. Yeah, with it. the d- the downplaying of the friendship was brutal. And I think Sandoval even threw in there, like, you fucked Kristen to get on the show. He did. Like, why? And it's like, why? I don't understand. Like, this goes back to the same thing. Sandoval can just be apologetic. That's really the only thing that he should do. That's the only thing he deserves to do, if talking at all is an he option. He doesn't deserve anything. I know. But the only thing you can do in that position is just be apologetic. And if you really, like, you hurt James. You did. You could apologize in this situation. James probably, you know, he's going to keep yelling, but he's not going to get to the point where he runs over there and wants to beat your fucking ass, which let him go. You know what? Springer. Let him go. Springer. In honor of Jerry Springer, let them fight. Yeah. But I will say, Liberty Death Match. Look, credit where credit's due. There was an episode in which we called Andy a pussy like a long time ago. Andy Cohen had no issue getting in between those guys. No. He was ready to push. He goes, hey, knock it off, gets in James' face, tries to back him off. He wasn't scared. So, Andy. You are not a pussy. I like that move. I don't think we call, we said that he was soft on his questions. No, you you actually legitimately called him a pussy because somebody <laughs> com- <laughs> somebody commented, "Hey, maybe Andy hasn't asked you to be bartenders because Shooter called him a pussy." I was like, "Oh yeah, I don't remember that." Yeah, that's okay, that but it's happen. rescinded. It's rescinded yeah, right he, now. He's earned not being called that. Yeah, because he did. I I appreciated that he jumped in between them, but it's so funny because James, you know. He gets really amped up. He needs some time to settle down. But when he gets up and Sandoval, I love, oh, you know I love tough guy moments. They're my favorite. I love the fake tough guy moment. After it settles down, now it's kind of, it's mellowed out and Sandoval sits down and he doesn't even make eye contact with James, but he kind of does like the shoulder shrug. He goes, get in my face again. I'm going to beat you fucking, I'm going to beat your ass. (laughs) No, you're not. Like, James's reaction was even funnier. He's I'm, like, I'm way like, more ripped than you. <laughs> I'm way more ripped. What are you talking about? And he gets, but he gets back up. Which you know what? In my mind, that's a challenge from Sandoval. Him getting back up is warranted. Yes. Don't ask for the smoke because he's gonna come bring it to you. And by the way, James isn't afraid to come and do it. No. Don't challenge a guy that's gonna fuck you up. And by the way, I think James wins that fight. But that is that's like the raw emotion that I like. So I do feel like the beginning of this reunion and the majority of it got derailed because there is. There's a lot of emotion there, but there's also a lot of projecting going on, and that kind of steers us away from the main topic that we want to discuss. James's emotion was raw and real. Mm-hmm. That is different. I yep. like seeing that because that means that he gives a fuck. He does. He cares. He cares about losing this friendship. Yes, and he doesn't care about just being right. He doesn't care about just being mean to somebody for the sake of being mean to them because it makes him feel better, a la la la. A la la la. But like that's that. like, it, it's just... But you know what I what I took from it? And this is what broke my heart. He wants to understand. Yeah, that's like, all he wants. He's, you, you can feel the pain in this poor man's That's voice. why I said, like, if he just apologized to him, he might actually be able to move forward with James at some point in time. Obviously, no time no, soon. You, you but eventually, it. you might... Now, you just completely fucked because it. Because you embarrassed him also. By yes. saying the things you said right there and invalidating how he was feeling... You just, you've embarrassed him on TV when you're the one in the hot seat, dude. Don't flip it around to try it. Like, that's what I don't get. You need to go into this shit understanding that there is nothing you can do or say to flip the script. Yep. You can't point fingers at anybody else. Definitely don't try to drag somebody that defended you in the midst of your affair. Even Do you when, think Sandoval even rewatched the season? Yeah, he probably watched it and jerked off because he's weird. <laughs> 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 but let's keep going. Um, Andy asks him, he finally gets people to settle down and he does want to get some responses out of Sandoval. And he says, why not come clean? And Sandoval says he was scared to and didn't want to add to it because of how bad of a year Ariana was she having. She had a lot going on. You know, I didn't Dude! Want to- <laughs> then don't fuck You said it Raquel. before, I know. It's, it's just wild. We don't even have to break it down. Just saying it out loud is funny and really just You didn't just want like to add to it. Okay. You don't think that Raquel would add to that? You dick. Like, what do you mean? Her dog died. Her grandmother died. Everyone's died. And then you fucked her. That just brings you back to the whole fucking issue. He's not upset for what he did. He's He's just upset that he got caught. Absolutely. But keep going. Keep going. They're going to have to keep churning this shit out. I think, truly, that we heard Schwartz answer for more of his shit than we did out of Sandoval because of the people yelling. 
And this is what pissed me off with the yelling. And I get it. I do agree with you that they have a pass here. They're allowed to say what they want to say. I think it's a little hypocritical, and I think that Lala needs to change her approach because I don't think that it's productive the way she's going about it, just specifically how she's stating things. I think it's doing her a disservice. But we get Schwartz, but we get the questioning of Schwartz, and that's when he tells that, you know, I, I heard it started around July. That was the post-Mondrian. It was see you next Tuesday. They were at the Abbey together. That's when Sandoval's like, what? No, I told you it was January or whatever. And... Sandoval keeps trying to die on the hill of after the one night stand, we were we were not doing anything for a really long time. That supposedly. doesn't that doesn't matter. It, yeah. Also, supposedly big grain of salt there. And just because Schwartz is saying also, like, no, 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 after that it was totally cool. Everything got back to normal. Irrelevant. But that's not a that's not a hill to die on, dipshit. Like you you cheated. You waited. You continued to cheat. You didn't apologize for the cheating after the first time and then go back and cheat again. You cheated. Pause. Cheated. Yeah, there's just no way that they actually paused. And for somebody, I get it. Like, if you don't live in the same area and you don't see each other all the time, like, you can't just do it and then, like, there's no fucking chance there's that no they chance, stopped. But the, I really, I just view January as when they stopped being so secretive. I think that's when they got a little more brash about it. They, yeah, I think that they realized, like, oh, shit, Ali saw us at the Abbey dancing together. Let's try to spin this. All right. Uh, Schwartz, go make just, out with her. Let's just lay low. We'll lay low for a little while. You know, obviously, we can still talk and we can still FaceTime and do our sexy FaceTime. But <laughs> Gross. And then they got tired of it. I bet you they took like three or four months, and that's when Sandoval probably started turning it on about wanting to break up with Ariana, and I don't fucking know. You see it's that cut like, scene of him from September 2022 laying the groundwork? Like, I just don't think it's fair that everyone else airs out their dirty laundry, but we don't. Nothing you say is valid because you're currently having an affair. So it doesn't mean shit to me because yeah. it wasn't addressed beforehand. But now we kind of get to see into the the weird Schwartz of it all where... You know, when they were in Mexico, Schwartz knew and then still made out with Raquel. That's gross. And then when they're standing at the food truck, and I even wrote this down during that episode, I was like, Schwartz was talking about Tom. When he goes, I think she's got a crush on somebody else because he knew they were hooking up. Like, that was gross. And to see Tom's reaction in that moment, he kind of smirks. So Tom knows. But they both know who they're talking about. So however you want to look at this, Tom was proud of this for a very long time. And that's why Andy asked him, like, did this get you off? Like, seeing those two in, like, the same crowd together, knowing? he did. Like, that's the whole excitement of the whole thing. That's probably why they're not dating anymore. It's not because they had to go through hell after being revealed and losing everything and have to go on your fucking retreat and go hide away or whatever. I think that there was no rush anymore. That's yeah. part of the problem. Tom needed that midlife crisis rush to get a boner. Cheating on, yeah, literally to get a boner. I think that, that honestly, I'm going to put this out there into the world. I'm probably going to put this on TikTok, and I'm going to point at you, YouTube. Oh, Tom Sandoval can't get a boner unless he's cheating because he's got erectile dysfunction because he's a big pussy. Not that everyone with ED is a big pussy, but this guy, huge pussy. Well, the good thing is Cialis or uh, Viagra is not going to touch him. No, no, no. He's not going to get any sponsors for no. boner pills. And he's going to have to continue to cheat on women to get know, an erection. I don't know what's worse in my mind. The fact that Schwartz hooked up with Raquel as a smokescreen or the fact that Schwartz hooked up with Raquel knowing that Sandoval had just fucked her the week before. What's worse? Both. <laughs> All encompassing. It's fucking gross. But this could also take it to a whole different level if maybe Tom and Tom just want to fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Just drop the go-between. <laughs> drop the go-between and do work, boys. Go to Schwartz and Sandy's and bang. That's all Schwartz's sad apartment needs. Yeah, just those two having sex all over it. Ugh. Anyway, we get confirmation of Miami Girl. We knew that was coming. Um, that is somewhat news, but we got a hint of that in the past couple of weeks that, in fact, Miami Girl happened. And look, people can say Ariana turned a blind eye. People can say whatever they want. And... I don't think it was a blind eye. I think that she's just a ride or die girl, dude. I think she's the kind of person that when she's in a relationship, that person is number one in her life. She's going to do and say what she needs to say to make sure they're taken care of. She took a hit for Tom because she realized, I think that this is it. This is the man I want to spend the rest of my life with. I don't want him to look like shit. So I'm going to eat this one. He never fucked Miami girl in my mind. Yeah, no, I get that. And I, I think that this all goes to show you like the fact that Sandoval is so open about it now He's doing the same thing that he's been doing the whole time, which is, okay, so there's 
slightly hard evidence about this. Uh, I'm just going to admit that, and that'll be a truth, and then everybody's going to think I'm telling the truth about yeah. everything. I know what he, I know what he's fucking doing. He's trying to offer up these things that we already know. Right, yeah, and yeah, trying yeah. to be truthful about them so that people might look at it like, okay, he's telling the truth about that, so he must be telling the truth about everything else, or at least we can kind of try to figure it out instead of pointing to the fact that it's probably been going on way longer than August 2022. I That's think... the whole thing, and I, I need that... Yeah. And we, I, I do want to ask you, mm-hmm. what the fuck do you think the big reveal is next week? Because it's been driving me crazy. I know it's going to be something stupid. It's going to be small. It's going to be small. Anybody that thinks Raquel's pregnant, that's not going to happen. I don't even know what the context is either. Like, it nah. might just be Sheena's daughter showing up and like, hey, Summer's here. Summer's here. Cool, everybody. Brock, he cut his hair. Summer's here. Oh my all right, God. see you guys later. I would actually kind of appreciate it if it's all a bit and it's just a big reveal of Brock's hair. I, I would actually appreciate that. that kind of level of a uh, bit where I'd be like, you know what? I respect that's like a good dad joke, but let's keep going. We're almost through let's it. Let's bring in Sandoval's mom. How did this make you feel? <laughs> you lost your whole life savings because of this douchebag over here with a mustache. Well, this I'm really sad now mustache. and I'm poor. I'm poor and sad and my son's gross, but he won't accept <laughs> that he's still on tour with his quote unquote band in bumfuck Texas. Um, oh man. What if they make Sandoval get up and start singing? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! And coming to you live, we have a performance from Tom Sandoval and the most extras. No thanks. Uh, we get a quick check in with Schwartz and Katie, and he thinks that there's a double standard here because she was hooking up with dudes in their house, and he made out with Raquel, and he doesn't see how they're that different. In my mind, they are different, obviously, because Raquel's in the friend group, and she did her business outside of the group. Do you think he has some ground to stand on where he might have felt slighted by her bringing dudes back to their house? Um, so I want to point out first, you're doing the thing that confused me last night, which was talking about something other than Tom and Ariana. Oh, so, yeah. all right. So we're on uh, Katie and Schwartz. Just really yeah, quick. Okay, yeah. Just to, look, we got to cover all of it. No, I know. I know. I'm kidding. Um, I, I don't know because we didn't get confirmation that Katie brought them back to the house. I Katie said no. And, the, and Schwartz said, I think he did. But... If we're just leaving it with what we know, which is that Katie was still going on dates while they were living there, they own the house together. It's the same thing as fucking Tom and Ariana. Yeah, I don't think that that's... I don't think that that's wrong. Schwartz shouldn't have asked. Don't right. ask, don't tell. But then also when he asked, he didn't seem that torn up about it. He's like, oh, gross. I shouldn't have asked. It's like, yeah, you, then don't. Yeah. Right? She, maybe she he, did... He's just a big sad oaf, though. So, like, he doesn't get torn up about things. He just looks really depressed. He looks really depressed. But, like, in Katie's defense, and again, like, I've defended her all season, even though I'm not her biggest fan... She did do a good job of keeping a veil over what she was doing. Even at least after so it appears. when Schwartz was like gallivanting around and talking about hooking up with Raquel with Sheena you and all You still didn't shit. hear shit from Katie. You didn't see the dude that looked like Weird Al Yankovic show up. <laughs> That's exactly. Oh, my God. That's fucking perfect. How did I not think of that before? <laughs> That's literally what young Weird Peter? Al. No, nah, Satchel. Satchel. Yeah, that was close. Weird Satch Yankovic. Yeah, there you go. Nah, I can do but better no, than she, that. I, I agree. Like, again... I am also not really the biggest Katie fan. I think that she did a good job kind of keeping things behind closed doors and not, obviously not hooking up with anybody in the friend group. I mean, Sandoval was open for business, but (laughs) who the fuck knows? I mean, it's, nobody's looking good at this point when it comes Mm -hmm. down to everybody else. Schwartz, least of all, he doesn't deserve any sympathy. Like, I know that last week we were talking about how sad his life is. But we were laughing that about it. That was a mocking of, like, thing. Like, yeah, I feel kind of bad because it's so fucking because depressing. Because it's so fucking funny. Yeah. And like, depressing. Like, that's why we're like, maybe like, you know, you got to feel bad yeah. at this. Like, literally everything's crumbling. And the one thing he had that he poured, he lost everything else for the bar. And now that's crumbling because his friend is the worst person on earth. I think, I think overall for Schwartz's psyche, I mean, he was so depressed and in his head that I really do think that he talked himself into hooking up with Raquel was like a turning point for him, and he's not going to let go of that. No, I think... So now he's just spitballing and rationalizing it how he needs to yeah, so that he can hold on to that little bit, because if that goes away... He has nothing left. And he has nothing left. All he has <laughs> left is to lean on that, because that was the final nail in the he coffin. He still has split custody with the dogs, which is so... But, <laughs> but like, that's a good point. That was the final nail in the coffin of his relationship with Katie, and that was a real relationship. Did I think it was weird that they tried to continue this friendship post-divorce? Yeah. Yeah, I did. Did I think it was going to work out? No, I didn't. But that doesn't mean I was rooting for it to, to be a disaster, but that was the last nail in the coffin. So, yeah, I think you you nailed it with by him 
hooking up with Raquel or making out with Raquel that one night, that was the last straw. So if he chalks that moment up to he was in the wrong, now he really, everything's gone. Yeah, then so everything's that that's a mental gone. game. He that's needs a, that. That's a good point. But we're almost done. But we do find out that something about her pulled in a cool 250K on merchandise. Just merch. Which is enough to fund the the restaurant, open the restaurant. Well, LVP said, oh, so you can open the doors now. And both Katie and Ariana just like, yeah. Well, maybe they just want to do it. They just want to spend their fucking money. Who I cares? I think they also just want investors. I don't think they want to put all of their coin into this they place. Shouldn't. They should not. Yeah. Correct. You yeah. should not dump all your money. You should get investors. That's the smart I thing did, to do. I did like, slightly think it was a little funny, though, that they're not open. I did, too. But I also, there's no way that they're not open because of the same reasons the Toms aren't. No, I would imagine not. they're not open because Ariana's been on a world tour since all of this, and rightfully so. Go do your thing, girl. But I don't think that it's reasons because of that. I would imagine Scandaval and the post, the aftermath it makes of Scandaval. sense, yeah. And I mean, if they're okay with it, then who cares? Yeah. Who are we to tell oh, them dude, They're walking on? around making nothing but money mm-hmm. right now. They're doing Uber commercials. They're doing world tour she's in 15 different commercials that we watched air just last night like all of these people are making so much fucking money off of this that i don't think they care about the sandwich shop opening for another couple of months they're cool oh, yeah. if it opens like towards the end of the year like doesn't matter they're rolling in dough no pun intended An greg's idiot. involved at all i don't i hope not although We've gotten conflicting reports about Greg. I've heard that he's actually a really good guy. I heard from another source that he wasn't. So there you go. That's what I'm saying. Conflicting reports. But let's finish I like it, it up. He's a man of mystery. <laughs> another Austin Powers joke. Two weeks in a row. Hey. Oh, I wish I had the soundboard. <laughs> We're like a fat bastard quote. But we already talked about the Lala, Sheena, and Brock, and them like coming back, getting closer because of the kids and. I mean, um, Sandoval made a good point or not. I hate to say it. Which, what did he say? He said that uh, Lala was using Katie to stay away from Sheena's wedding. Oh, yeah. She was. She I was. Mean, she was. I hated that it came from him. I wish it came from Schwartz or somebody else, but, but we knew. Yeah, we knew what was happening when we were watching it. Yeah. Like, we said the same thing in the episode. So, yeah, like, fuck you, Sandoval, but that was true. But look, they have. Here's what I don't like, and this is one point I'll give to Lala. My point for Lala here, Sandoval keeps trying to use all this stuff from the past. Now, I have said that because of people's past, maybe they should be careful with how they phrase certain things. That doesn't mean that you can use past mistakes to justify any of the current behavior, especially for you, Sandoval, trying to spin this narrative and and shift the focus even briefly by bringing up indiscretions of anybody else in that cast is a terrible idea. It doesn't matter. They could have killed somebody, and you're still going to be in the hot seat. So this is when you need to shut the fuck up. But I will say this. When Lala finishes it with, can we stop using the word bully like we're in kindergarten? I didn't appreciate that. I'm not going to get on a soapbox here, but I will say, look, bullying is across the board, whether you're 50 or 15, it doesn't fucking matter. If you're a bully, you're a bully. We watch people get bullied on these shows all the time. We watch Sutton go through it in Beverly Hills in that awful moment with Diana Jenkins, and nobody came to her defense. That was terrible to watch. That was bullying. There are moments of bullying, and you shouldn't, one, be a little bullying, and two, this is why, and here's where I'm going to get into, like, I've been kind of saving it and saving it, but What I've been alluding to with Lala, by going at it like this, by James going at it like this, I understand there's emotions involved. I understand you're not going to be fucking perfect. I get that, and I will give you a pass to a certain extent. But by becoming the bully in the situation, it draws negative attention on you because now you're not giving him a chance to speak. Not that he deserves it, but if you want him to bury himself, if you want him to fucking lose and light himself on fire, make him answer the questions. Make him talk. Defend himself. Ask him why and give him five minutes of silence to rattle off some stupid story and spin a dumb web and dig this hole deeper. By talking over him, you're taking the attention off of him. By you yelling when he starts to talk, now we're not hearing anything. Now we're not getting to watch him like squirm and defend himself with lie after lie after lie. And that's not productive. You're not coming out on top just because you called him names for 30 minutes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I, I actually fully agree. And that's why I think this, the first part was hard to watch. And I, again, I, I think that it'll get better. I think they'll calm down a little bit before the Raquel thing. But 
it's just tough because we've been rooting for this the whole time, mm-hmm. knowing fully that he's just going to spin this stupid web of lies and get caught up and he's going to say something wrong. We already saw it. You gave Schwartz a couple of minutes to talk and spot on the timelines off. Yep. Like, let him talk and then analyze it with the things that you already know. Let oh. Ariana flip out. This is her moment. She was Don't, smiling when other people were doing it. I, I know. And she does love the support, and I get it. And obviously, she needs the support. But to a certain extent, because we as the viewer need to see this little sniveling piece of shit squirm. Yes. I want to see him squirm for 10 hours. I don't want to see him just get screamed at because you know what? After the third hour of getting screamed at, he's going to become numb. Yep. And he's not going to say anything. He's going to keep everything short. But if you gave him just a little bit of yarn there in the beginning. He will hang himself. He will hang himself with a little bit of yarn. You just have to let him go. I'm, I'm, all I'm saying, I, I get it. I get the emotions are high. You're trying to defend your girl. You all feel slighted by this man. It's disgusting. It's gross. Let him do the dirty work. Just present a question. Let him talk. And then tell him why he's wrong with evidence. And he's going to fucking dig the biggest hole ever. I think that he still does. Honestly, I really do. I I think that eventually he's going to, whether it's, and this is why I think that those one-on-ones are so important. Because if we truly don't get any information out of this, and it's really just a screaming match the entire time, and people keep popping out of their chairs and walking away... We're not going to get anything out of it, but the one-on-ones are going to be very, very important Yeah, because that's the only time that we're going to actually be able to hear him say things and hear Ariana say things and kind of line them up and call him a little piece of shit to his face, essentially, while he's just talking to Andy. I think that it does get better, and this is my theory on it. He did the Howie Mandel thing right after the reunion. Yes. In oh, that, okay. he was spinning all of these little things and talking about how he's the victim in all yep. of this. I think he was trying to paint a picture after that so that people had something to point to after the reunion. Yep. I think that he knows that the reunion went so poorly and he said some terrible, dumb shit, which he already started doing. I think that he's going to have a moment where he has to lay things out and it's so fucked up and so wrong and there's lies everywhere that are just easily uncovered. I think that that was like a, glorif- a glorified piece for himself afterwards. Yeah. To try to save sense. himself from the reunion because that's how he felt. So I hope that I'm right about that. We'll see. I hope that we sit in these chairs next week and we get to talk about how we actually learned something. Right. I want to hear his. I want to hear his defense. I don't. I'm not going to believe a lick of it, but I want to hear it. Yeah. Because- I want to hear his more than Raquel's. Like honestly, if they tire out and then Sandoval can talk for a little bit and just hang himself, and then Raquel comes out and you guys get new energy and you just scream at her. I don't give a shit what she. That's has to say. fine. She's a sociopath, yeah, so anything she says is going to be wrong anyway. Right. I mean, you see her smirking in the trailer. Like yeah. you shouldn't be showing any emotion. You already know how to do that, so just continue to Did do that. Did you see her face when Ariana was talking about how they actually did have an intimate relationship and they were having a good month sexually? Yeah. And yeah. and Raquel was like, ugh. Yeah, like, ugh. oh my god, my boyfriend had sex with his girlfriend. Oh, like, oh no! What a sentence. Oh. Well, yeah, I'm excited for next week. I think it's going to be just more revealing, you know. I, I again, you, you can't fault them for coming in hot. I will, like, just for the fifteenth time, say it's not going as well as you think it is. Let him do the dirty work. Let him talk himself into the grave. That's what we want to see. Well, pro tip: watch the recap on Peacock the next day because the uncensored version is so much better. The, yeah, without the constant the bleeps, bleeping, the bleeps throw was, it off. It was just really distracting me. And I know, again, I have a short attention span, but it was tough to follow. And I didn't know who was talking, and I didn't know what they really said. Honestly, there were some things. But the next day, when I watched it this morning, it was just so much better. But that takes us to the question portion of the show from Emma Charles. That's not a weird one. It's just a lot of, there's two R's, so I had to roll the R R rolls. What would be the best moves for Sandy and Raquel right now? Oh, sorry, she said Rachel. Best moves for Sandy and Rachel right now, in your opinion? Right now as in the reunion or right now as in real life? Let's say right now in real life. Uh, Probably distance themselves entirely, which it sounds like they're already doing because Sandoval's dating some fucking lunatic in Texas. Um... And Raquel's hiding somewhere. I, I'm going to answer the reunion aspect. Um, I think we do get to see a clip where Sandoval's like, I'm just tired of getting yelled at. I can't do this anymore. I don't want a camera in my face. Yeah, camera in my face, but, 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 man. And then he calls TMZ and TMZ shows up. But um, 
I, I don't know. I guess they clearly have to get their fucking story straight if they're going to try to figure out something here. I think they should get married. <laughs> I think the only way you have any saving grace here in any way, shape, or form is if this is forever. If you burned your lives to the ground for a seven-month fling, you guys are dumber than I thought, and I already think you're really fucking dumb. So get married, sail off into the sunset, and sink the boat in the Bermuda Triangle and get lost in the Bermuda Triangle. What they should do is, because I think they're both from the Midwest, right? Go back to the Midwest and buy Go a Go back farm. to the Midwest and enter in this thing. It's called the lottery, right? So you get in a lottery, and then you get your name picked. Then you have to go to the middle of the cornfield, and they need good crops for the season, so they stone them. Did you read that one? We read, read that in, in high school. In high school. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. That was Mr. Stevens' class. Yeah. Wow. Sacrificial lambs Dude, for a good crop. That was a good short story. Yeah, I great. remember that short story. Good twist. Good didn't see it coming. Back. I didn't either. Yeah. Oh, wow. Or I was going to say, I thought you were going more to like a, a Hunger Games scenario. Go to Crappy Lake, Illinois. Go to Crappy Lake, Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> If we had Sonia, Luann, they're just Raquel walking around trying Tom. to fish, and then you see Raquel and Tom just somewhere off in the distance looking at each other, like, oh, oh there they are. Man, we're both wearing a lightning bolt. But that's the thing. Like, if they moved somewhere like rural, if they truly don't want cameras in their face, I don't think cameras are going to follow them somewhere in Iowa. They definitely will to yeah. go see. Oh, who gives a shit? Oh, interesting. From Destiny Mitchell. Do you think attraction between Sandoval and Rachel caused the engagement breakup between Rachel and James? Yes. Yeah, me too. Absolutely. Yep. I think that was 100% the caveat for it. I think that that was probably... I think the whole paying for the engagement was I the think, start of it, honestly. I think that's so fucking glossed over. They did like have clips of it last night, but a little I, bit. I do think that that was the start of it. Like, like We don't... We don't, know Raquel and this doughy-eyed idiot... She was absolutely enamored. Like, look at this guy. He's just throwing cash around. And he, he really loves his friend James. I like him a he lot. He threw that so, cash at it for that reason. He uh -huh. was flexing on Rachel to show yes. her. That was like, look how big my dick is. Pretty Without much. a doubt. Like, yeah. That was 150%. And I don't think we talk about it enough. Nope. From Max Jun 3 or Max June. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Will Tom Schwartz detach from Tom Sandoval? I don't think so. No, nah, probably not. He doesn't have the balls, no. and he also doesn't have the friends. Yeah, <laughs> I do think it's funny that Katie said that he's like a serial killer's wet dream because <laughs> he has so many friend groups. But honestly, right now he has one friend. Yeah, no, I don't think. I think that he might distance himself for even potentially an extended period of time. But I don't think that um, it will be forever. No. Yeah. One more. One more. From Katie Welsh, I need to know your take on Lisa defending the Tom's foolery because barf. We touched on it already. Yeah, we touched on it already. Um, I don't really, I'm a little conflicted about it because part of me thinks that it's a really bad move for her to do that. And it didn't look right. Like it didn't sit right with me. No, and but. And part of me understands right. why she did it, whether it's. One, to just try to be like a voice of reason to keep them calm because clearly they're just losing their fucking heads over all of this. Yeah. Two, there's the business aspect of it. And that would be a selfish reason. I Honestly, I think that she did it just to be a voice of reason where there is none. And honestly, I think it's trying to help Andy and the reunion and yeah, the maybe. show more I than think, anything. Yeah. That's where I'm going to land on it. I think there's a lot of reasons that she could have done it. I think for her own sake, she probably should not have done it. How about that? I like that. I do want to read one more because this person <laughs> pointed out, sorry for all the cues, just love y'all and can't wait to hear the next pod. And I feel bad not reading one of her questions because she did put in the effort. So Liz Carbs, Liz's Carbs, which one do I want to pick? How many did she ask? Um, I see four. Love it. Need more of Liz. Yeah, Liz's carbs. There, I'll say your name a bunch so that I, we appreciate the effort. Liz, um, if you live in New York or around wait, there, you actually, can come I don't know. Live show. Wait a minute, Liz. I, I got a bone to pick here because you say sorry for all the cues. Just love y'all and coming for the next pod. But out of your four cues that you submitted, two of them are not questions. The first one is not a cue, but the number of times Rachel rolled her eyes during part one, awful. That's a statement. Two, sorry for all the cues. Just love y'all. Can wait to hear the next pod. That's also a statement. So you didn't ask that many cues. Two is actually pretty standard. Most people ask two questions, Liz. So I'm I'm conflicted now. I don't want to read Liz. your question. Did you see what you, did you see what you did? This is what you did. You give me an yes, inch. Yes. You give me an inch. I'm gonna take a mile, Liz. 
okay? Liz is carbs. Come on, Liz. You feel better now? You, you happy now, Liz? Uh, I'll leave Liz alone. Liz is carbs asks, <laughs> do you think James and Lala went too hard too fast early? I only read that one because I feel bad not reading your question. We already talked about it. Yeah, they did, but we understand why. I don't think they're why. of burning themselves out. No, I don't think either. so either. But too hard, too fast, early. Yes, they did, but do we understand why? Yeah, we do. Or at least I do. I mean, yeah. I get it. Yeah. But, wow, I'm tired. I feel like I just, Me like. Me too. I didn't know we had that much content for this. <laughs> Neither did I. I, I was like, well, once you opened your notebook and started reading, I was like, oh, yeah. That's what oh, I there said. Was yeah. information there was there. a lot more there than I previously thought. It's just tough to like thought. sift through all the, the bleeps. The bleeps and the violence. And do we have a bleep on the sound? Oh, my God. We do. Is that you stupid mother. Oh, wait. I think I hit the heartbeat. I did. That you guys. Steel are... loves me. Wait, wait, wait. What? Yeah, heartbeat. No, no, no. Ready? Go f- yourself. I can't wait to listen while I'm editing tonight. You stupid piece of. It holds. All right, it. we're losing it. We're losing it. <laughs> See, <there's, laughs> I feel emotionally. I we were recording for a second. I was going to tell him to hit the other ones, but the point is, we got through episode one. I'm looking forward to episode two. I think it's going to be a little more divulging. Although, like you said, we got a lot more out of this episode than I thought. We just had to kind of sift through the bleeps and the bullshit. But uh, but a quick plug at the end. Remember, we are going to be at Barstool Sansom next Wednesday for the watch party. So make sure that you get your spot, reserve your spot now. Come hang out with us. It's going to be a really good time. Um, we can get mad together. We, we can, can laugh. eat goat cheese balls together. We can have some goat cheese balls. There's pumptinis. Pumptinis, the sand of all trash can. We'll what get else lit. was there? I yeah. Don't know. Whatever. But come on out. Eyed be... bitch. <laughs> oh, that was one of the drinks. Andy yeah. bitch. Andy yeah. bitch. Um, Come on out. Seriously, it's going to be a good time. Make sure you get your tickets also for the live show July 26th. They're flying off the shelves, the virtual shelves. Uh, We're super duper excited for that. Yeah. You got anything else? Because I'm I'm becoming delirious, I I think. I have to go pack. We got a trip this weekend. You get to leave tomorrow. Friends trip. Damn, I have to leave Saturday morning. There's friendship and then there's friends trip. Friends trip. Don't break the ship on a friends trip. Mm -hmm. That's what they say. So we will see yous next Wednesday. We'll see yous we next Friday. We already forgot about the two episode thing. So we'll see you next Friday or we'll Wednesday. Next Damn Wednesday. It. See you next Friday. Jesus Christ, the prop are out of here before we make fools out of Later. ourselves. Bye.